okay, we're back in the office now, and we want to map and analyze our field collected data that's tied to those GPS coordinates, those latitude longitude locations that we collected outside. One of the ways to do that is to use a GPS connected to a cable that's then connected to my computer. So I'm going to do that right now. Every GPS device is different, so you need to make sure that you're connecting it correctly. In the case of this one, which is a GPS 76 from Garmin, I've got a, a small rubber sort of a notch uh, flap going on. And I'm going to connect my device to a cable. In this particular case, my cable has a little notch in the end, so it only fits one way. All right, so I connect that securely. Great. In the case of cables, uh, a variety of different kind of cables exist. Of course, you've got to make sure that the cable that you're using fits into your particular GPS. And there are a lot of varieties available. In the case of this one, as you can possibly see, I have a serial end of this cable. So what I had to do, since a lot of computers nowadays do not have the serial ports that they used to in the past, I'm going from a serial port to another cable that connects to a USB. So then I can go ahead on the back of my computer, connect the USB to the USB port, then the next step is to turn on my GPS device and page through the introductory screens. Once I do that, my GPS device is on. Then I'm going to go ahead and fire up my favorite program for bringing in these points. As you know from reading that GPS to GIS a more perfect union document, there are a whole variety of different tools and utilities to bring in your GPS coordinates off of your GPS receiver into your computer. One of the programs that I've known and used for years is DNR Garmin from the Minnesota Department of Natural Resources. It only works with Garmin devices, but it works well and it's free, and it outputs in a variety of different formats, one of which, or actually several of which, are very nicely compatible with your GIS. So I'm going to go ahead and fire up my DNR Garmin program. And it's going to connect to my GPS device. Great. Now I'm going to go to Waypoint Download. And I'm going to download those waypoints. Once I do that, I'm going to have a whole set of waypoints uh, on my computer. Now, the nice thing about, one of the nice things about the DNR Garmin program is that before you bring all your waypoints in from your GPS device, you can actually edit that file. So if I don't want certain waypoints, I don't have to bring them in. Also, another useful thing about it is that I can download the track. Remember that track is a little breadcrumb trail that uh, automatically was collecting uh, my location when I was out in the field. So I can also download and use that track. In my case, I only need the last few waypoints that I collected out there. And so I'm going to go to those waypoints right now. I'm going to verify that I have the waypoints I need by looking at the dates. So I collected some waypoints on a certain day. I'm going to highlight those and verify that those are truly the ones that I want. Now I'm going to go ahead and say, oh great, now that I've got my waypoints, I'm going to save to file. Select a location for these waypoints. As in all good data management when you're working with geographic information systems, it's important to name these in a logical fashion and to place them in a logical folder. That way you'll be able to find your data later. There are several approaches to saving the files that you're downloading from your GPS device. I prefer to let the GIS do the projecting. So when I bring in my data, I usually bring it in as unprojected data. Again, there's a lot of choices available, and that document will 
step you through some of the advantages and disadvantages to saving it as projected versus unprojected. I'm going to bring in my data as unprojected. And the first thing I'm going to bring in is a Waypoints unprojected shape file. So I'm going to do that. And I only had, let's see here, one, two, three, four, five, six waypoints that I collected out in the field for those trees that we mapped. Great. I'm saving that. I'm also going to save the track. So I'm going to go to track download now. And I've got a whole lot of tracks, track points in my GPS. This is one of the GPSs I use quite often out in the field. So I have a whole lot of tracks in there. And what I found is it's best when it's downloading to not interrupt it. Don't do anything else on the computer even uh, while this thing is downloading. The reason why is because I think these, these, uh, these drivers that uh, operate with these cables and the ports, they're just a little bit uh, sensitive. So I think it's best not to, not to do anything while the tracks or the waypoints are downloading and you'll have better results. Okay, I've received a signal that my tracks have all downloaded onto my computer. Now I'm ready to work with them. I've got my track points, I've got a track line, and I also have my waypoints. All three of those I'll be able to work with in the context of my geographic information system. So I can analyze not only the data and the points where the data were collected, but also the route that I took to reach those data points. As I said, I've got a lot of tracks in my system here, in my GPS receiver. So I'm going to select just the track that I saved on the day that we collected those trees outside the ESRI office building in Denver, Colorado. And I'm going to, once I've got those selected, I'm going to go ahead and say File, Save to File. And I'm going to make an unprojected shape file once again, just like I did with the waypoints. And I'm going to name it appropriately, and I'm going to put it in my same data folder. Uh, this time I'm going to call it trackpoints.shp, or shapefile. And I'm going to define the output shape as a point. And that's great. It saved that. Now I'm going to save it one more time. I'm going to go back to File, Save to File. To say unprojected shapefile again. This time I'm going to call it my S3 Broomfield Track Line dot SHP. And this time I'm going to make a line file. Purely for cosmetic reasons in this case. I really like to see the line connecting all those points where I walked. And that way I can compare what a line file looks like versus a point file. So I'm going to save it as a line file. Great. Now I've got a point line as a track, track saved as points and lines, and I also have the waypoints saved as points. To do a cable that's connected to, to a computer. Cut. <clears throat> All right, we're back in the office, and we want to map and then analyze our GPS coordinates along with our field data. Cut. <clears throat> 